So Warren Buffett over at Berkshire Hathaway just put out a letter uh, to shareholders and essentially talking about their investment strategy and philosophy. And I want to go over these things with you because I think it's a great way to learn. And let's jump right in. So we got the letter right here. Let's take a look. Again, this is uh, Warren Buffett. Uh, to the shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger, my long-term partner, and I have a job of managing the savings of a great number of of individuals. We are grateful for their enduring trust, a relationship that often spans much of their adult lifetime. It is those uh, dedicated savers that are at the forefront in my mind as I write this letter. And um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, just the highlights that I think are really interesting. Um, he talks about uh, how the uh, essentially uh, shareholders invest in him, invested for a lifetime. They just have them manage their money forever. And um, he also talks about that they'll, they'll either sometimes buy a whole business uh, or uh, parts of it. Uh, but not necessarily have um, the direct control of their management. And uh, he emphasizes sort of the importance of picking businesses that have good uh, managers slash CEOs. Um, I want to read some more particular language of it, where he's saying here, uh, in our second category of ownership, uh, we buy publicly traded stocks through which we uh, passively own pieces of businesses. Holding these investments, we have no say in management. So I was telling you guys about that. Um, our goal in, in both forms of ownership is to make meaningful investments in businesses with both long-lasting favorable economic characteristics and trustworthy managers. Please note, uh, particularly that we own publicly traded stocks based on our expectations about their long-term business performance, not because we view them as vehicles for drug purchases and sales. That point is crucial. Charlie and I are not stock pickers. We are business pickers. And this is sort of why on this channel, guys, I, I talk about business quite a bit because I think that's a very important thing to understand fundamental things of, of, of business. I, I just, even if you're not, you know, going to be uh, picking socks as this sort of thing, just understanding how business works, be it for your career, your job. Um, but yes, for investing, it certainly matters as well. And I always like how we say like, you know, we're fundamental, you know, uh, choosers of business or pickers of business. Because um, one of the things that that's sort of disturbing, I'm, I'm sharing with you guys, like um, there's a lot of challenges out there that just like look at charts all day. And that's like all they do. They don't actually talk about the the news or the business this is sort of why I emphasize this stuff on, on the channel because I, I really do believe in these kind of things um, like the Buffett. If you are going to do this stuff, right, you want to be a business picker, uh, not necessarily a stock picker, but I think is a, a good way to look at it. Um, Warry, he's saying here, this is fun too as well. Um, Over the years, I have made many mistakes. And this is something that Buffett and, and um, Munger talk about a lot. Um, people do make mistakes. It's a real thing. And, um, you know, you'll, and I'm just telling you guys, you'll see on YouTube, like more of the scamming people, they just like act like they don't make any mistakes. And so that's always a big red flag. People who don't, who say like they, they don't make mistakes. I mean, the best people at the business and stuff make mistakes. It's just part of the game. Um, so even Buffett is saying we make mistakes. Uh, consequently, our extensive collection of businesses uh, currently consists of a few enterprises that have truly extraordinary economics, many that enjoy very good economic characteristics and have a large group uh, that are marginal along the way. Other businesses in which I have invested have died, their products unwanted by the public. Capitalism has two sides. The system creates an ever-growing pile of losers while concurrently delivering a gusher of improved goods and services. Schumpeter called this phenomenon creative destruction. And um, if you don't know what the creative destruction thing, the, the basic gist of it is that, um, so just we'll use the example of the horse and the cart's the easy one. So, you know, for a long time, the horse was like, you know, the greatest uh, transportation ever. And then eventually what was the Model T came out um, and uh, replaced, right? And then uh, maybe we're eventually, you know, flying cars are going to replace the road cars, et cetera. But there's, there's always something new to sort of uh, upend things. And um, essentially this creates opportunity. So you do have to um, be aware of that. So like, for example, you know, if you put all your money in horses um, and, and just sort of put your head in the sand, you would do poorly if you guys understand what I'm saying. So um, there's always opportunity uh, in the market in terms of like the creative destruction is always sort of, sort of thing, uh, maybe new businesses up, uh, upending old ones. Um, and he's even saying though, you know, um, they, they don't get everything right all the time. Sometimes they, they, they buy companies where the, no one wants their products and the business ultimately fails. But I think the, the notion of though, understanding that this stuff is investing in businesses, I, I think is key. Uh, in, in August, 1994, yes, 1994, Berkshire completed its seven year purchase of 400 million shares of Coca-Cola we now own. The total cost was 1.3 billion. Uh, then a very meaningful installment in Berkshire, which is still a still meaningful sum today, if you ask me. But um, but uh, then he says here, um, the cash dividend we received from Coke in 1994 was 75 million. Uh, by 2022, the dividend had increased to 704 million. Um, growth occurred every year, just as certain as birthdays. Uh, all Charlie and I were required to do 
was cash coax quarterly dividend checks. We expect those checks uh, are highly likely to grow. And then uh, he goes on to say the same thing about American Express. American Express is the same story. Berkshire's purchases of, of Amex uh, were essentially, uh, essentially completed in 1995 and coincidentally uh, also cost $1.3 billion. Annual dividends received from this investment have grown from $41 million to uh, $302 million. Those checks, too, seemingly highly likely uh, to increase. And um, this is something I was mentioning to you guys like last year, if you guys had a long time follow the channel, that um, we were talking about this kind of stuff, like dividend stocks and these sort of things. And, you know, it, it's funny because in it, it's just how it is. In the last couple of years, in the stimulus check market and the Kathy Wood Ark Invest market and this kind of stuff, you know, it wasn't cool to, to be a Warren Buffett kind of person, right? Um, it, it just, you know, the things were going up like a million percent in a day. And you're just like, why would I want to do Buffett and dividends? It's boring. You know, Coca-Cola is, is boring. It's not going to make me rich. Um, it depends on your philosophy, right? So the, the Buffett philosophy is buy great businesses, collect those dividend checks and, uh, be, be patient. Um, uh, they has more, th th words of philosophy that I think are great as well, but, uh, just wanted to share some more stuff with you guys. And, um, as he says here, um, the lesson for investors, the weeds wither away and significance as the flowers bloom. Uh, over time, it just takes a few winners to work wonders. And yes, it helps to start early and live to your 90s as well, right? All of these words of wisdom are, are great for you guys to hear and good for me as well. That's why I read through this stuff together with you guys. I want to share this. Um, they go on and uh, talk about um, some very uh, 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 particular sort of just kind of what should I say, words of wisdom and, and like single uh, sentence bites. And I think they're all fantastic. I'm going to go through these together. So uh, he says here, nothing beats having a great partner. Charlie and I think pretty much alike, uh, but what it takes uh, me a page to explain, he sums up in one sentence. Uh, his version, moreover, is always more clearly re reasoned and also more artfully and might uh, add bluntly stated. Um, here are a few of his thoughts. This is coming from uh, Charlie Munger in, in a very recent podcast. So let's read some of these. There's a this is all Charlie Munger's one. Okay. The world is full of foolish gamblers and they will not do as well as the patient investor, right? So um, I, as you can see, they're, they're all about just long-term, slow and turtle wins the race kind of thing. Um, uh, Munger's also saying here, if you don't see the world the way it is, it's like judging something through a distorted lens. And it's it's fascinating when I, when, I, when I read that one, I was thinking to myself, this is something like I preach on this channel all the time where... I live in the real world. I live in reality. And that's the sort of why I focus on facts all the time. And, and like, and the way that Buffett says, yes, Munger states that very well. If you don't see the world the way it is, it's like judging something through a distorted lens. And, and God, this is, for me, that one hits home a lot because this is one of the philosophies that I have. And we'll see what else he's got. I mean, this is, this is fantastic. Um, all I want to know is where I'm going to die. So I'll never go there. <laughs> and a related thought, uh, early on, write your uh, desired obituary, then behave accordingly. What a great word of wisdom. To write your desired obituary and then behave accordingly. And, and that reminds me, it's funny, we just made a video, or we, I always say we, because it's, it's, you know, I do this with you guys, is, um, you know, have friends around you that aspire to do the same things that you want to do and that make you a better person. And, and even this here is like, you know, write your own obituary. So like, what would be the person that you would be most proud to be, at, say, in your 90s, all the things that you, you know, wanted to do, all the things that you wish you would accomplish, et cetera. And, and one of the things that I learned in life is um, just don't have any regrets. You know, if, if you want to do something, if something's eating at you, that you want to do a certain kind of job, you want to start study a certain kind of thing, you want to go to a certain kind of city, just do it. Uh, you only have one life. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel inspired reading this stuff too. So anyway, I go on out. But let's see what else that Munger has to say. It's inspiring me reading this stuff. Okay, he says here, if you don't care whether you are rational or not, you won't work on it. Then you will say irrational and get loud. Stay rational and get lousy results. If you don't care whether you are rational or not, you won't work on it. Then you will stay irrational and get lousy results. And and I think it, it, this is something that you know, going through, say, investing or trading, these kind of things is, you know, learn from your mistakes, you know, try to see where you let emotions uh, rule you, you just made poor decisions. And this could be in relationships and love relationships as well. Um, because believe me, you guys know this, right? In love and war, right? It's all irrational. So I, I think, and, and that's the other thing too, he's kind of saying like, you, you've got to like, care about that. Like if you, if you care about it, you can change it. If you don't care about it, you're never going to change. Patience can be learned. Having a long attention span and ability to concentrate on one thing for a long time is a huge advantage. Yeah, 
the, this God, all this stuff and it's funny because munger i mean uh, he's like double my age basically um but uh i feel like we come from the same generation and this is something that it's a real problem on youtube um especially with the new tiktok generation you just have a, a generation of, of kids uh, and adults to be fairly frank that can't sit still and concentrate and and it's frustrating as a creator on youtube just sharing with you guys it's the most frustrating thing is like i just sometimes I just want to sit down and have a conversation with you i don't want to have to you know edit a million things and do you know tons of texts and graphics and like just make like a music video when something like these kind of things should be slow thoughtful and methodical so Yes, um, you know, being able to sit still and just have a conversation is a key factor and not have to be constantly looking at your phone and this kind of thing. So I, I'm all about Munger, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know I'm gushing over Munger, but dude, yeah, I, this, this, this stuff is fantastic advice. Um, okay, you can learn a lot from dead people. Read of the deceased you admire and detest. Yeah, 100%. And this is what we're doing now. Now, yes, Munger and, and, and um, Buffett aren't dead, but, um, you know, sometimes people ask, like, you know, hey, Chris, like, you know, how do you get better at these things? And, and one is, I, I mean, I try to pass things that I've learned in my life um, to you guys. And also, too, I, I say so many times in this channel, you don't have to just constantly make mistakes to get better. You can learn from other people's mistakes. I can also learn from other people's uh, triumphs. And, and, and just you can learn any number of ways, but always, always, always be learning and yes, you can learn from dead people. And it was frustrating because um, it was uh, last year or two years ago or whatever. Before, I will say before. I remember there, there was a couple of YouTubers, I don't mention names, but they were just like talking about how Warren Buffett and Bill Gates are dumb and you should all buy Shiba Inu. And I was just like, oh my God. And, and I made joke videos about that stuff. You, you can find it. It's the big money Chris video. They used to make jokes. But um, there, are, there are young people out there that just think this kind of thinking is old fashioned. Um, I, I strongly disagree. I think all this advice is something that could be useful for forever. Let's see what else we got here. Warren and I don't focus on the froth of the market. We seek out good long-term investments and stubbornly hold on to uh, hold them for a long time. And actually, this was a a really big one. Uh, I've I've heard uh, uh, Buffett and Munger talk about all the time. They don't chase the, the the latest trend or the latest froth. So you know, uh, right now, for example, like AI is hot. Um, that's not really the style of, of, of investor Buffett. He wouldn't just be going, "Oh my God, I have to go all in AI." Um, it, it doesn't mean it's necessarily right or wrong. Um, it, this is his style because uh, my personal opinion is, like, say for example, AI. Um, if, if you're in in the right company, like say Microsoft, and they just you know massively uh, over you know throwing Google, just for example, or like like Buffett and Munger weren't necessarily like big you know Google search engine people. They weren't necessarily uh, historically uh, into investing in tech. Um, so you know th th that's kind of a negative of them, but. To to be fair, I mean, they, they, they there's this their strategy. They go with you know, uh, tried and, and tested. So like in the '90s, they're picking up Coca Cola and American Express, and you know they're not necessarily chasing the the, the latest trend because the thing with the latest trend, and even though they did talk about it earlier with the um, uh, the creative destruction, how there's always you know turnover in the markets and and businesses replace uh, older businesses. Um, not every business is guaranteed to succeed. So that's sort of the negative of when you chase the trend of so say yes. AI is the future, but maybe it's not going to be chat GPT. You know, maybe it's not even going to be Google. Maybe it's going to be like some company we've ever heard of. Um, and there could be 30 or 40 companies out there that fail. It's only one or two that survive. So this is sort of, um, I, I think, I mean, I, I, that's why I'm sharing this philosophy. It's good to hear different points of view on, on these kind of things, especially for people who, who are legit. Let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, Gra uh, ben Graham, this is, the, this is a real famous quote. I use this one all the time. Um, ben Graham, day to day, the stock market is a voting machine. In the long term, it's a weighing machine. If you keep making something more valuable, then some wise person is going to notice it and start buying. <laughs> so, you know, in the, in the short term, the stocks can do crazy, crazy things day to day. It's just like whatever is the most popular that day. But over over time, stocks uh, and businesses, right, they're talking about do tend to trade on, on what they're inherently worth. And, and if you're a good business, as, as the way they say it, right, keep making something more valuable, you know, someone wise is going to figure out that your company is like a, a money maker, right? And, and a good investment. So it's, it's good. There is no such thing as a 100% sure thing when investing. Uh, thus, the use of leverage is dangerous and a string of wonderful numbers uh, times zero will always equal zero. Don't count on getting rich twice. A string of numbers. So <laughs> if, 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 if something is, you know, inherently bad, it doesn't matter like how, when you, how you dress it up, it, it's still going to be bad. And, um, uh, don't count on getting rich twice. I think, I think that's a good one as well. Um, all good advice. You have to keep learning if you want to become a great investor. When the world changes, you must change. I think that's really good. 
And and it's funny though because they're <laughs> but, but 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 this also I was I was gonna say that they they're, they you know they they kind of stay the way that they are and they invest the same kind of stuff. But in, in in the same regard too, they're not just burying their heads in the sand. So so you know earlier in the letter, which um, you guys can find fun to read the whole letter, they talk about they they were in a couple of businesses that completely failed and and they you know failed miserably, but they they got out as fast as they could kind of thing. So you know it's so yes they have a philosophy, but they don't put their head in the sand as soon as how I read that. Um, what else we got here? Warren and I hated railroad stocks for decades, but the world changed. And finally, the, f- the country had four huge railroads of vital importance to the American economy. Uh, we were slow to recognize the change, um, but better late than never. Yeah, and just jump on board. I, I get that. And last, um, finally, I will add two short sentences. Charlie, uh, by Charlie, that have uh, been his decision clinchers for decades. Warren, Think more about it. You're smart, and I'm right. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so I, hopefully this this philosophy is, is useful for you guys. I I, I enjoy sharing the, this this with you, and, and it's 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 fun for me as well, probably Frank. Um, you know, and all these things like like you when you hear these things for the first time, it, it'll it'll sink in, and just it's more of the meditation kind of thing, and, and think about like how you can change your philosophy, be it just your life, uh, how you think about work, how you think about investing, how you think about money, these kind of things. And um, this is how you, how you get better. You take um, new philosophies, new ideas, and incorporate, incorporate, incorporate them into your life and how it makes sense. And um, also try to try to try to a couple uh, self with people that want to talk about these things as well. So um, this is sort of why we do this. I, I enjoy talking about this stuff with you guys. So thanks again for watching everyone. Please share your thoughts and uh, I'll catch you next video.